Jeremy S. Cook here, and today I'll be remote controlling this Dream Beast kit with a couple of stepper motors. You might think that stepper motors are overkill for a kit like this, where I'm just going to be driving it left and right like a tank. But as you'll see in just a second, these cheap stepper motors for, they cost like $2 and they fit in just perfectly on this Dream Beast kit. The first step was to separate it into the left and right sections of legs. I had six on the right and six on the left. Just two like a tank, one would go forward, one would go backwards. And there's the steppers right there. They fit in nicely and as you see they, they mount quite nicely too. What I did was took this length of, of plastic that actually came in the kit, cut it up into supports for the servos, or steppers I should say, stuck the steppers together, then stuffed, stuck the plastic on. These plastic pieces will be used in just a second to stick them on with, with zip ties, so they just go in metal rods and provide a nice surface to mount everything. The other thing I had to worry about was how I was physically going to attach the output shaft from the motors to the input shaft on the Strand Beast. This was just accomplished by putting a notch in the, in the plastic part itself. I didn't know how this would work, but it, it did work out pretty well. We've got a flat spot on the out output shaft, and that just, just fit in quite nicely. There I am cutting it out with my trusty Dremel tool, and then finishing off with some snips. Fits in nicely. And you can see me hooking up the whole assembly here with my zip ties. Another zip tie here kept it in, in place, and then a couple more on the other side. The really neat thing about this build is that, unlike some of my other strain beasts that I've made nearly from scratch, is that it really doesn't require any exotic tools. Everything here was very basic electronics tools, snips, Dremel tool, whatever. And the parts probably cost around, around $20, $25. It'd definitely be a good project to take on if you're looking to actually do something like this and not just not just watch which I'm happy if you just watch that's that's cool too so with that in place it was time to test the left leg that worked quite well with a just example sketch and the right leg worked to you can see it speeding up and slowing down with that tested it was time to permanently attach them using some hot glue on the one side and then more hot glue on the other I finished the build off by zip tying them down just to provide a little bit more support. And really from, from there, the mechanical part's pretty much done. That's, that's pretty much all there is to hooking this up. Now the electronic would take a little bit more work as you'll see in just a second. But there I'm, I'm hot gluing the zip ties down there so it doesn't get out of place. And I was, I was pleasantly surprised at how well this all worked out. So with that done, I hooked up the servos, and oh, what do you know, if one's going, if they're both going forwards, since they're back to back, they have to actually be reversed to each other. So did that and it was walking nicely. So to add a remote control, I use this little um, little key fob attachment. Even looks like a cell phone, even has a little, little um, antenna that pops out. It just makes an on off signal for the Arduino at five volts. You can see him here attaching it all to a, a perf board and then putting the ground wires in and everything. With that done, I hooked up the two, two servo drivers, or stepper drivers, I should say. And with that done, I had a remote control strand beast. I mean, granted, I didn't really think it, it would need some sort of like cart that it pulled along behind it for the batteries and receiver, but it's a successful project, I suppose. Since that's obviously not going to work, I duct taped the top of the two motors so I didn't short everything out, and then mounted the the perf board to the top of that to make it into a nice uh, nice thing. Now here I'm putting a regulator on here, a five volt regulator. I was having some electrical problems with it earlier, and what do you know? When it actually gets a, the proper five volts, it actually works pretty well. So that's you know something to remember. <laughs> I tried using it at four volts with one lipo and eight volts with two, but you know when you get it actually at five, it, it behaves like it's supposed to. More hot glue, put the put the drivers on there, and some more creative work with zip ties completed the build, and that's pretty much it. All there is to it. I just put the batteries in on the top, and from there I just walked around nicely and. I could remote control with a key fob. Here it is walking at full speed. I'll speed that up in just a second. 
but the rest of the video is just pretty much watching it walk around because you know why not that's why you watch the video you want to see more footage of this right really looks awesome kind of creepy I just love how these things walk it's funny after having built some of these over several years this is the first time I've actually dealt with a kit I've been very surprised at how I guess pleasantly surprised at how well they, they're built for manufacturing and how you can get something like this for just five dollars it was pretty pretty incredible anyway I hope you enjoyed the video if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, or leave a comment. Jeremy S. Cook, signing off. Control one of these little servo, little strain piece kits with a servo motor, stepper motor. Remote controlling this strain piece kit.